What's going on Stringers? Uh, Lars here. Just wanted to come back and give you another video, a little bit more content uh, about how to uh, take your game to the next level, take your stringing game to the next level. Today we're talking about pocket pounding. Uh, a couple of months ago I did a couple of stories on Instagram about uh, pounding your pockets and since then I've had a, a, a lot of people talking about you know, the before and afters, like I did a whole bunch of before and afters and people would send them to me and I would repost them. And I think it's awesome, but I still see far too many pockets uh, being strung that it is very obvious that they are either not pounded at all or only the tiniest little bit. And I wanted to make this video purely to, to illustrate how much you really need to do to pound your pocket. You know, it, it's it's not something you can just do a little bit that like that pocket pounder that you used to be able to buy that was like this long and it had a ball in the end, it's not gonna cut it. So that's why we're here. First thing, what do you need? Um, biggest thing that you need is a some sort of long handled implement. Uh, something short's not okay. Uh, a butter knife is not okay. You know, kind of stretching out your leathers in a traditional pocket, that's, that's one thing. I, I don't know how to do that. I don't do that very much. Uh, but as far as pounding your pocket is concerned, you need a long handle implement, preferably my, 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 my current gamer of choice, uh, is a Rawlings big stick. Louisville slugger is just fine. Uh, I, I use a baseball bat. It is the single best use of a baseball bat that I've ever seen or heard of. Uh, and the reason why I do it is because I can put it into the ground and I can press down against it. Um, whereas if I'm just holding a stick and I'm just using my hand or I'm using a ball or using a pocket pounder, it's just not going to put the right amount of stress on the mesh. And that's the biggest thing that we need to worry about right now is really putting stress on the mesh and stretching it out as much as possible. A couple of other variations uh, that you can use, if not a bat, uh, I've seen people use the uh, the, the rounded wooden ball at the bottom of a staircase, um, uh, my guy Traddy Tree, he can, he'll sell you a, uh, a, 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 a hollowed out pool, a billiard ball that you could go buy some, uh, some steel pipe and put it on a pipe. That would be perfect. Uh, I have one. I just haven't put it together yet. Um. Uh, I know my man Big Sam, he went and had a wooden ball and drilled a hole in it and he had it put onto a, um, a piece of pipe that was, uh, had, a, had a whole stand so it stood all by itself, it wasn't going to fall down, That's, that works just fine. There's lots of different ways that you can make this work, you just got to make sure you've got something that will hold against the ground and will stay there as you're pounding the pocket. I've had people talk to me and, and ask me the question, what is the point? Why, why are we actually pounding the pocket? Like it's going to get there at some point. Well, that's the whole point. We don't want to get there at some point. We want to get to the pocket being broken in as fast as possible. We want to avoid the lengthy break-in process uh, that you know would typically take you know, a week, you know, like a couple of days to a week, depending on how much you're playing for college players or professional players that are putting in a lot of hours every week, a lot of hours practicing on the wall might be a little bit less, but we want to get to that point. Where we've got that full broken in perfect pocket as fast as possible. The other huge point of why we are pounding your pockets is to avoid a, a pocket bagging out on us. Uh, it's happened to everybody. Uh, you know, thankfully we are in a new age of mesh, and companies are putting a lot of technology into the mesh that we're we're using today. And so there's a lot of marketing and mumbo jumbo talking about like weatherproofing and waterproof and do do do. At the end of the day. If your stick gets wet, if water gets in this, doesn't matter what mesh it is, doesn't matter who made it, doesn't matter how weatherproof it is, if there is water getting in between the ball and the mesh, things are going to be different. And especially when it comes to pocket pounding, if you haven't stretched your mesh out, playing in wet weather will help stretch everything out a little bit faster. Uh, hence why for many years when I would pound pockets, especially after stringing them, this is way back in uh, you know, the Gemalax hard and Gemalax soft days, 
I used to have a crock pot that I would keep with me. I'd bring it with me to camp. It wasn't for cooking. I would literally just put water in it, turn it on, and I'd use it to dip so I didn't have to run to the bathroom and run hot water. And I literally had hot water right there, and I'd just dip the mesh in the water just to be able to soften it up to pull it apart. Uh, that, you know, water will help that process. In With today's mesh, you don't really need to do that. It, it can help, but you don't have to. As far as bagging out is concerned, if you're not pounding your pocket, your mesh is going to eventually get to where it wants to be, but it's going to be a long process and things are going to change. So for the first day or the third day or the first week or the second week or at the end of the first month, the pocket is going to be different each of those times because it's very slowly going to work its way out there. So we want to pound the pocket right away at the very beginning before we even give the stick to who it's going to so that there's no change. They just pick up the pocket and then they go. This is a big reason why a lot of the guys I string sticks for uh, come back because the, the sticks perform right away. They perform consistently throughout the lifespan of the stick, which is finite, but it's still like, you know, from day one to day seven to day 30 to day 60 to day 90, assuming you're playing every day. You know, think of a college player, you know, practicing five, six days a week. You know, I'll give them a stick in the first day of uh, the season. I'll give them a stick halfway through the season, and it'll be brand new piece of mesh, brand new head. It'll throw exactly the same as the first one did on the first day, but it also throws exactly the same as that first one I did on the same day that I gave them a brand new one in the middle of the season. So, as an example, one of my favorite pieces of mesh right now is the STX Memory Mesh. Uh, here we have with some American flag sidewall. This is not broken in. Um, I'm going to break it in real quick and I'm going to speed it up. Uh, so we'll get from this to fully broken in right about... Oh my goodness gracious, what just happened? So... This uh, memory mesh is fantastic. I absolutely love it. And part of the reason why I love it is it because compared to a lot of the other meshes that you get on the market today, it opens up, like the mesh holes here, they open up wide, wider than most of the other meshes that you can find. And so, it, you know, it took a little while to get used to. You can't do the same patterns with this stuff. Uh, that you would do with a lot of other meshes because it, it just it gets so much bigger. For anyone who's ever strung uh, 20 millimeter mark mesh, you know what I'm talking about. You can't do the same patterns, or it's going to be, you know, a ball and a half deep there. So the next thing that we're going to talk to talk about is how to properly pound your pocket. Now, here I've got another uh, Ultra Power, a black Ultra Power. I've got some green and white fade uh, mesh, Dynasty mesh. This is Force Rhombus. Uh, here's another example of stuff of, you know, great new technology, absolutely fantastic color. Uh, I really like this stuff. I've been putting in a lot of my sticks lately and sticks that I've been doing for, uh, for players that I work with. A couple of things you want to take into consideration is what kind of chair you're using. Now, it, it doesn't have to it can be a lot of different kinds of chairs now maybe this is me being very picky but you can't do this on a bar stool you got to be able to be low enough that you you know can have your bat and it can be out you know in front of you and you can lean over so if you're on a really high chair it's not going to work um, your bat needs to be of a, the proper size this is a 31 inch which is perfect. Uh, the other thing you need to make sure is your bat is long enough. Now, right now, uh, you can't really see it. You'll be able to see it a little bit later, but the bat comes up about eight inches above the top of my knees when I'm sitting in this chair that I'm in right now. Uh, and that works because I want to be able to use uh, my body weight leaning forward to press down and really stretch out the mesh. And I want to be able to, you know, use the bat. I want to be able to stretch the mesh and hit the mesh on top of the bat really, really hard and not hit myself in the knees. <laughs> it's happened. Uh, I, you know, ter terribly embarrassed when it does happen. But that's why you want to have a bat that is long enough for you to do this. And so here is, uh, you ready? Oh, my goodness gracious, it happened again. Oh, what do we have here? 
Oh, it's amazing. Here's another uh, another example of a mesh that looks a little tight and opens up a whole lot more than you would expect it to. Uh, you know, something that uh, I, I hope that this video is the catalyst of getting a bunch of defensemen and long stick midfielders to get excited about the Ultra Power as a head for them to use because it's incredibly stiff. It is really difficult. Uh, <laughs> Uh, to bend this thing and it, it's just the way that the scoop uh, comes back forward here uh, the way that the scoop comes back forward uh, is absolutely fantastic for ground balls and I know that STX came out and said that this is supposed to be like a mid low pocket stick challenge accepted and here we go so it is not just for mid low pockets it is for high pockets as well. Next thing that we're gonna talk about is a couple of things you do not want to do. Now, a couple of things you do not want to do is you do not want to just pound the pocket where you think you want the ball to sit uh, or where, there, where you strung the pocket for where the ball you want the ball to sit. Uh, and, and the reason for that is all of the mesh is gonna get stretched out at some point or another. And you want to stretch it all out ahead of time. So you're, like I said earlier, you're getting, uh, getting all that break-in process out of the way. The other thing you don't want to do is start putting in shooters before you pound your pocket. Because you're, if you're putting in shooters, like here's a great example. This is a dual one. Uh, this is for Joe Nardella. Uh, this thing is fully strung right now. There's no shooters in it. I'm going to send it to him with no shooters. Uh, I, I, I have gotten to work with him a lot in the last six months and uh, I've got him on the no shooters train but if I put shooters in this stick right now and you saw right here you know it would keep that flat and it wouldn't I wouldn't be able to stretch that mesh the mesh would want to stretch but then again the pocket would get all set up underneath that bottom shooter and it just it wouldn't be the same it wouldn't be right uh, lastly, as far as like one of the three main things as far as what not to do in, in, in pounding your pockets, this is personal preference. Uh, I always completely finish stringing the stick before I start pounding the pocket, which means that I'm, I'm always putting in the top string, the sidewalls, and the bottom string. I've seen a lot of people uh, who have sent me the, their before and after pictures and of, you know, they, they, they stretch the mesh out without a bottom string. Now, that works, that's okay, but I'm a perfectionist when it comes to this, and so I'm gonna look at it at the very bottom, I'm gonna say, but all of these holes down here, they didn't get fully stretched out because they didn't have anything to stretch against, and that's important because that's what's gonna happen when you play. You're gonna be playing with a ball in the stick at some point, uh, and if there's certain areas that aren't stretched out, it's going to have that somewhat break-in process. Even if it's a little bit down at the very bottom, I, I'm still picky about that. So uh, here's our last super quick before and after. Oh, it happened again. What happened? Oh my goodness, look at that. It's uh, absolutely fantastic. If you, uh, if you rewind back a couple of seconds, you'll see that uh, beforehand it looked nothing like this. This is a much better, much easier to throw with. Now, like, this is where the mesh wants to go. Right now, this dual one, this has uh, STX Dry Mesh Light. Um, I love using this for face-off, guys. It's so thin and malleable. It just, it, it doesn't really get caught. Um, I, I love using this stuff for face-off, guys. Uh, uh, Joe's, you know, a big reason I've, I've started using it because I had Joe try it and he really liked it. So I started using it more and more for... Uh, the face-off guys at Harvard, and uh, they really liked it. Joe really likes it, so boom. Um, okay, so last but not least, uh, I'm going to move. I've got one more head to do, and in a second, I'm going to change the camera, and I've got one more to do. And this one, I'm actually going to go through the whole process. I'm going to move the camera, and you're going to get to see uh, what this is going to look like but I'm gonna go through the, all, all the steps. I'm gonna actually talk through what I'm doing uh, and do it a little bit slower. Okay, so now I'm gonna tilt the camera down a bit so that we can see what's actually happening here on the mesh. So 
right now, uh, what you're seeing right now, this is going to be the before and after. Uh, this is an X10 strong uh, double inside. This is another piece of uh, Mesh Dynasty. This is called Force Hexagon. It's your typical like hexagon shaped uh, mesh, but this is what you're going to see before it is stretched out. It's kind of like right there in the middle. Uh, I abs I love that STX is still making this head. This thing is still an elite level head. I don't care what anybody says. Okay, so. I keep the, uh, like, I'm using my knees to hold the bat in place so the bat doesn't move around very much. That way I've got one hand on the shaft up by the throat of the pot, or throat of the head, and I can use my other hand to help press down. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of go north-south along the, uh, the edge, uh, you know, on, along the inside of the, the pocket. Or as you can see here, this is a uh, perfect Albany fade. This one's going out to my man, Brett Queener. Um, you know, these are just little Albany colors for him. So if you notice, like, that's already a huge difference. But you don't want to just do that. Like I said before, you don't want to just pound on one spot. You want to make sure you're hitting all spots of the mess. So I'm going to make sure that I get up here near the corners... You can tell here, like I can try and put the corner right there, and I'm trying to press down. I'm trying to stretch out every single hole. I'm trying to go through every single one. I'm going on both sides. I'm trying to get every hole. Then, after I've done it this way a whole bunch, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the reverse side. Now, you're never, probably never going to carry the ball in the reverse side of the pocket, but it's important to get the, the mesh as, as fully stretched out as possible to stretch it in both ways. Okay, now I'm going to go back again here. And now, I mean, this is something that you've got to do and you've got to make sure that uh, anybody, if you've got neighbors below you, uh, they know what you're doing. But... I am genuinely trying to press down and hit the mesh as hard as possible. And I'm doing that because I want to stretch the mesh out as much as possible. And now we're going to bring it back up. And so here's the, uh, if you remember what it looked like before, here's the after. Okay, this went from being a kind of a regular old mid pocket to a mid high grocery bag that you can take to Whole Foods and get everything you want for a family of four. Uh, or in Brett Queener's case, uh, he can you know have a date. He can have date night, and uh, but it's uh, he can go stag because it'll be. Uh, Dangle City Party of One. That was a terrible joke. So, as you can see, here's, uh, here's the after effects. Uh, what you saw before was a relatively mid-pocket. Uh, and now it's like a mid-high with a tremendous amount of holds right there just because of how much I pulled the mesh down on the sides to the inside and then used a whole bunch of mesh right in there. I doubled up a couple times right here and then finished with a couple of ones to even it out at the bottom. Uh, but, you know, this thing does not need any shooters. Uh, hashtag no shooter gang. And, you know, this thing would be fantastic for an offensive player who wants to shoot. This would be great for a defenseman. This would be great for a long stick midfielder, anybody who likes brown balls, and anybody who likes to feed a family of four going to Whole Foods or Trader Joe's on the weekend. Um, so, I hope this was beneficial. I hope this was uh, informative to some of you. Um, I, I know that this is, this is not my idea. This is not, I'm not the first person. I know that it, it's been said that you know, all of a sudden, you know, people start talking about this, or I started talking about this. No, this has been around for a lot longer than I've been doing it, but I still see so many young stringers out there who are not doing this, and, you know, 
I just, you know, I, the whole point of this is trying to help guys, help players of every level, youth, uh, middle school, high school, uh, college players, professional players. You'd be surprised at how many professional players um, don't know about stuff like this. I, I really just want to help stringers understand that, you know, with a little bit of elbow grease and a little bit of a help from... Uh, a friend that a lot of us probably have in their uh, in their garage or in their basement somewhere that they can get uh, the pocket of their dreams uh, which is with a little bit of hard work it, it literally takes you know a couple of minutes you know you don't need to do a whole lot more than that you know because I mean, you just don't that's all it, it's quick <laughs> um, so uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, if I missed anything, uh, if there's anything that I was unclear with, hit me up in the comments. Send me a direct message. Uh, I'm happy to help. I want to be a resource. I want to help out in any way I can uh, for uh, stringers, young and old, uh, to try and you know take their game, take their string game in the next level, to help them you know find the next best pocket they've ever had. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your time and I will see you in the next video. This, by the way, epic. You see this? Can you please like, literally, come out with like the X20. Come out with like the X2000 and just don't change a thing. Just change X10 to X2000 and be like, oh my god, this is the next greatest, like, this is, this is what comes after. Yeah. Okay, this is what comes after. Make the, the X10, yeah. same thing, same exact thing, plastic. Boom, I will take 1%. <laughs>